There are so many different depictions people have about heaven. Many see heaven as an eternity of just singing to Jesus. Now, I love to sing to the Lord, but there are other things I'd like to do as well. Having worked with men's ministries over the years, I, I know that some guys simply don't like to sing publicly. And so I think there are those who have this picture of heaven as just a worship service forever and ever and ever, and they kind of see heaven as something that might actually be boring. Now, there is nothing about heaven that will be boring. We will do many things in heaven, and not just sing songs to Jesus, though that will be part of it. Now, Randy Alcorn in his book, Heaven, gives us a great challenge about our thinking of heaven. He said, nothing is more often misdiagnosed than our homesickness for heaven. We think that what we want is sex, drugs, alcohol, a new job, a raise, a doctorate, a spouse, a large screen television, a new car, a cabin in the woods, a condo in Hawaii. What we really want is the person we were made for, Jesus, and the place we were made for, heaven. Nothing less can satisfy us. How true this quote is. Nothing will fully satisfy us except for the presence of Jesus in our lives, now and in heaven. In the first five verses of Revelation 19, it's clear that when Jesus comes again, there will be great joy and great worship. Let's take a look. After this, I heard what seemed to be the loud voice of a great multitude in heaven crying out, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God. For his judgments are true and just, for he has judged the great prostitute who corrupted the earth with her immorality and has avenged on her the blood of his servants. Once more they cried out, Hallelujah! The smoke from her goes up forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God who was seated on the throne saying, Amen! Hallelujah! And from the throne came a voice saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, you who fear him, small and great. Do our lives reflect passionate worship like these heavenly hosts do? Our God brings salvation and glory and power, and that should cause us to pause and give him praise every day. Because his judgments are always true and just. We should have great expectations on Sunday to lift his name high, with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Worship means worthship. It's any time we stop and give gratitude for how worthy God is to have our everything. So worship will be an exciting part of heaven. But how about now? Do our lives reflect what glory will look like? Is your life marked with daily worship? Our closing benediction, may we prioritize worship of God in our day-to-day -day lives. May we stop and reflect on all the ways our Savior is worthy of our praise. Amen.